Game time decisions. These are the critical points that Ohio State needs to consider and needs to execute in order to fulfill uh, its huge 30-something point point spread against Michigan State on Saturday. Andrew, what is your game time decision? What does the difference and what are the numbers of players that touch the football while the game is still in doubt? In doubt. Like, how spread around does this football get because you're trying to get Marvin Harrison Jr. to New York you want him to be in the Heisman conversation you that's obviously going to be on people's minds you want to get him some stats you want to get him some numbers but you also want to get Emeka Ibuka some some action you want to see him kind of get back into form same goes for Cade Stover you have Travion Henderson back in the mix now everybody's you sh- if, if Cade Stover's back everybody's gonna be back for this offense like is this a game where you know do you want to mix in Carnell Tate do you want to see what he can do Xavier Johnson, Julian Fleming, like how do you differentiate this? Because you have guys back now, you have guys healthy, and you've got two weeks before the Michigan game. So or two games before the Michigan game. What do you do to have the ball spread around a little bit? I think that this could be really indicative of how things go in the first or second quarter. This is kind of how they view the offense running, and this is what they want the offense to be when it's looking at its, you know, at a hundred percent. So I'm curious to see what that looks like. Does I mean, does Michigan State come out and double Marv, and then Emeka has a big first half? Does Cade Stover have a big first half? I'm, I'm curious to see what the numbers are, what the targets are, how much they run the ball, just who gets the ball and when. I think that that's going to be really important on Saturday. So I'm curious to see what that box score looks like. Probably, again, with the game in doubt, I want to use that in quotes, I want to say by halftime, third quarter, whatever, whenever you can kind of say, all right, Ohio State's pulled off the dogs a little bit, I want to look at that point and say, this guy had this many catches, this guy had this many targets, this guy had this many carries, and I'm just I'm curious to see what that looks like. So regardless of who gets the ball, Ohio State's got to start faster on offense. It's uh, It's been a, a problem, and I actually am writing a piece for our site once I get done talking to you guys on this camera, um, that kind of breaks this down. If you go back and look at just the Power 5 games, there's a really stark contrast. They're averaging about 5 yards per play in the first halves of games and like 6.8 in the second halves. That's that's a huge disparity. I think they've scored 6 offensive touchdowns in the first half, 7 offensive touchdowns in the first half in those 7 Power 5 games and like 16 in the second half. Like this offense just does, it takes too long to get going and it's worked out for them you know being a second half team has sort of worked out because they've been able to put it away in the second half but here's an interesting stat so Michigan has dominated the first half of games this year that isn't really what is I think concerning to Ohio State fans going into this game against Penn State Michigan has outscored opponents 114 to nothing in the third quarter so if Ohio State is gonna like putts around in the first half and which again we're talking about a game two weeks away but it applies to this one too if they're going to mess around for the first half and then hope to just turn it on after halftime, Michigan appears to kind of have an answer to that, that they've been applying to every game on their schedule. No team's as good as Ohio State, but I just want to see this Ohio State offense get into gear earlier, reduce mistakes earlier. They've had, I think, six turnovers, six of their eight turnovers against Power 5 teams that come in the first half. Um, they're making more mistakes early. They're giving away the ball more early. They need to go down, and they need to finish drives with touchdowns. That's the other thing, and that applies to all four quarters, but they need to see it more before half. And, again, Michigan State's been the opponent that they've done that the best against in the last two years. I mean, they've really just pounded on them for now, <laughs> the whole Ryan Day era, and they need to kind of keep that going, but it needs to start early. Steven, what is your game-time decision? Yeah, mine is, like, adjacent to yours. It's just more specifically about Kyle McCord. Nathan, we've covered enough Ohio State games at this point to know that they kind of get going that first drive with the passing game sometimes, how it's quick game, quick game, quick game. And with Kyle McCord, it's typically worked. He typically starts game off four for five, five for five, five for six. But then in that second quarter, to your point with the first half stuff, something just falls off a cliff. And it's usually started by something, whether it's a sack or an incompletion, a drop ball, or a you got – you know, stopped at the line of scrimmage, a, a backwards play. Something usually throws this offense off. So what happens in that second quarter when that moment happens? Does the offense just pick up and keep going the way it was going? Or do we see what we've been seeing the last couple of weeks where something happens and all of a sudden, well, the offense needs another quarter and a half to figure it out because this one thing threw some stuff off. So that's that's it's mostly about calm accord. And one, does he keep from making the mistake himself? But then also – the way these receivers have been playing at times, someone's going to drop a ball. Does it throw the entire offense for the rest of the half, or does Kyle McCord keep this thing chugging? Because 
Michigan State's not a very good opponent. So there's only so much we can take from what Kyle McCord does against Michigan State. But I do think – I just want to see him put a full game together. Well, a court – Two and a half quarters worth of game together. But I want to see him from the moment he – from all the meaningful snaps, he's just consistently chugging along, chugging along, chugging along. Because to me, that will be progress. Yeah, I think that goes hand in hand with what I'm talking about and kind of even into to what Andrew's talking about, just getting that distribution right. So come back to Cleveland.com on Saturday, or better yet, follow us on the text, 614-350-350. 3315. It's a two-week free trial. You sign up now. It takes you into Michigan week, really, um, getting ready for that game. All the news, the intel, the analysis that we uh, come up with from Cleveland.com will be coming there first. And listen to Buckeye Talk, wherever you can find podcasts.